welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, we're going to explore removing obstacles to goals. This is a fascinating topic and it's part of a three-part series that I've designed for all of January. So this content really fits in with what I talked about in the January 2019 overview where I did everyone's little mini report and I suggested that everybody re-engineer some aspect of their lives. And this concept of re-engineering, it really came out of looking at that beautiful conjunction that's forming in the sky right now in the sidereal Vedic system. We are seeing its uh, Sun, Mercury, Saturn coming together. And to me, that really gives a flavor for January, all of January, that we'll be re-engineering our life in some way. So re-strategizing, looking at what we have, reorganizing it, making everything work a bit better and a bit more efficiently for the year ahead so that we can be even more productive. So, you know, there are lots of tasks we can do now that will help set us up for the year so that we're even more efficient and even more able to do our work and do the things that we enjoy. So as part of the three-part series, I have been looking at things that will help you strategize even better. And the first part of the series, we looked at the concept of do it badly, where I quoted both Jordan Peterson and Steve Chandler. Uh, in the second video, I looked at exploring the Zen Buddhist don't know mind and the brilliance of the don't know mind, how it offers us tremendous flexibility and especially when you're in that strategic space and you're designing and thinking about, okay, well, what do I want to do? And it kind of that don't know mind enables you to try on lots of different things so you can then invest all your energy and focus yourself in that one area where you really want to make progress. And now in this video, we're looking at removing obstacles to goals. And this concept came out of a conversation that I had with the lead psychiatrist at a psychology clinic that I write for part time. Um, I only do that three days a month. I'm an astrologer full time, basically all the time. I'm always thinking astrology. But um, last year when I was speaking with the lead psychiatrist there, we were talking about what content do we want to do for Jan and Feb? And we talked about the fact that a lot of people are doing New Year's resolutions. She said that a lot of people do come to us um, wanting to set goals and do that kind of thing. And she said, but in therapy and as a therapist, we, yes, we look at goals and we help our clients set goals and, and we help with all that, but we spend the bulk of our time looking at the obstacles to goals. So an example of this is, let's say you want to become a millionaire. Well, you know, the lead therapist that I was speaking to, she'd sit down with you and she'd say, okay, why aren't you a millionaire? Why hasn't it happened? Right? So instead of looking at the goal, they spend a lot of time looking at why hasn't it happened? Right? I think this is really brilliant because that's what we all do. January, New Year's resolutions, we look at goals, we think of what we want to achieve, but we don't look at why hasn't it happened yet. And it's important to devote time to exploring why it hasn't happened, because when you do that, you'll see all the habits and patterns and dynamics and all the things that we've got going on that we actually need to change. And that's where we need to spend our energy first. Before we even get to any goals, we need to change the habits that are in place. We need to change what it is that we're doing that's actually preventing us from making progress on our goal. So in therapy, it seems that that's how they go about doing this. They'll look, and of course, that's how they go about um, doing this, you know, and they'll find all the self-sabotaging patterns and, you know, they'll find what's what's really going on. Uh, and, and in the previous two videos, I'm kind of touching on that. I've got a note here saying that, you know, perfectionism is one of those obstacles, right? Our desire to be perfect sometimes prevents us from even getting started or from trying. 
right? So that's definitely an obstacle to our goal, perfectionism. Uh, in the video before, exploring the Zen Buddhist don't know mind, I've got a note here that, um, yeah, ego, ego can get in the way, right? So ego can be our obstacle. And when you have the don't know mind, you free up a huge amount of energy. And that energy, if you've got ego going on, or if you have a position to defend, or if you are right about something, there's a lot of mental energy going in to financing those things and, and keeping those things in place. And when you go into that don't know mind, you release that and all of that energy becomes available to you. And you really want to use that energy in the service of your goals, in the creation of your goals, in creating the new, in exploring that new territory, right? So those two videos, I looked at that. And now this one, removing obstacles to goals. I mean, there can be so many um, obstacles to our goals. Fear is, is definitely one of them. And I was thinking about how do we do this astrologically because in a therapeutic setting you know they might spend two years with a person and uh, they will go through your childhood they will go through a lot they will go through and figure out the psychological build of how you operate and it takes a lot of time that work is not an overnight job um, you know and I've, I've definitely done a huge amount of work on myself uh, through um, working with coaches, therapists, spiritual people, mainly with highly advanced spiritual people who are like therapists, only they're psychic and do lots more things and they're amazing. But, um, but like, how do astrologers do this? And we definitely do this. We do this work all the time. And we do this work when, with precision accuracy, I might say, <laughs> um, we're able to get to the heart of the themes of your life and where your challenges are when we look at your Rahu Ketu axis. Now, in the sidereal Vedic system, uh, we do call it Rahu Ketu axis. If you're a Western astrologer, you will know this as the North Node and the South Node. And that is the pathway where we look at the themes of your life, and we look at the um, comfort zone that is Ketu, right? And we love being there, but we are very frightened to venture into the unexplored territory of Rahu. Now, Ketu in Sanskrit actually means flag. So it's the conquered territory of the past. You plant your flag, you've been there, you know what that's about, you know it brilliantly, and you're comfortable there. Uh, you know, you're very comfortable there. And there's seemingly little motivation to head over into the Rahu house. And Rahu can be a very tricky house because you don't have any experience there. And this is why I say get used to that don't know mind and come to enjoying it. Because in the Rahu house, that is where you don't know what you're doing. Because you don't have experience there, um, you know, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, when I've gone into the Rahu house before, I have been burnt, I've been humiliated, I've been um, disappointed, I've been, you know, made to look like a fool, um, everything. You bet. I've gone through some very interesting uh, Rahu experiences that you would never choose. You would never want to have those experiences or do those things or any of that but it's terrific learning and we need to see it that way we need to see that the Rahu house is the place where we learn so much and we pick up so many skills and that it's worth going there um, it's like a seesaw effect as well so you've got the Rahu house here and you've got the Ketu house here and it's kind of you're kind of teeter tottering. So you're you come into the Rahu house, and then you know you have an experience, and you go, oh, I'm scared, and then you run back into your Ketu house, and like this, you're kind of, and ideally you kind of find some place of of neutral where you come into the center, and you can kind of balance, and that's very much the idea of what we're trying to do there. Uh, one of my biggest teachers, Ernst Wilhelm, has designed a wonderful course, um, Healing Rahu Ketu, which is so phenomenal and mind-expanding. And I definitely um, 
have consumed that content and will reconsume and reconsume it. It's brilliant. And there's a video he has online as well where he talks about that the main thing that you have to do, if there's one thing that you have to do in your life, it's to heal that Rahu Ketu axis. That's actually what you're here to do. And I think it's really, really brilliant. And, you know, when I've looked at this for myself, when I've worked with other individuals on their Rahu Ketu axis, you know, you very quickly come to realize that it, it's not an overnight job and it, it does take at least a lifetime, at least, right? So it's not the kind of thing that you, you know, that you ever punish yourself or you think, you know, I'm a failure. No, 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 this is ongoing work. This is big work as well. And these are big themes that we have to deal with. Um I'll give you a very simple example. Let's start with the first house. First house, Ketu, seventh house, Rahu. I mean, what are you dealing with there? Well, okay, you're an individual self in that Ketu house and you're very comfortable doing that. But how are you with other people? And, you know, can you be an individual self while being with other people? Um, for example, you know, there's... There's, there are so many and what I hope to do on the channel is hopefully I'll get the time to do my own videos on Rahu Ketu Axis because I think it is the most important thing in astrology. I think if you're pressed for time, what you need to learn is, I think it's Saturn and the Moon, you've got to learn those two. If you're pressed for time, learn those two and Rahu Ketu Axis. That is one thing that you cannot not study you have to study your Rahu Ketu axis it's really 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 essential and really important and it will give you the themes of your life and what you're here to do because you are here to I'm going over time you are definitely here to to conquer that Rahu house right the new territory you're meant to explore it you're meant to make headway this time round so factor that in as you're strategizing the year ahead, as you're thinking, what do I want to achieve? Where does Rahu live in your, in your chart? And perhaps this year will involve you making more attempts, making some more serious attempts to make progress in that part of your life. So I really hope you've enjoyed this little video. I'm going to end it here. I could keep talking and I could, I'd love to go through all the different houses, and, but I think we'll do that. I should do like a video on each or something like that. So perhaps that might be something this year. I don't know. I haven't planned my content for the year <laughs> as some YouTubers do. Some are amazing. So uh, as you can see, this is new unconquered territory for me. And um, yeah, I'm, making little bits of progress every day. So thank you so much for watching. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time.